So do you need to break in a new rifle? If so, what is the best process? Well, I asked 21 rifle manufacturers. You wanna know what they said, didn't you? Well, pull up a chair. George back with the New Hunter's Guide, the YouTube channel, and a surging podcast, helping new hunters get started and bringing new insights to all hunters. Today, I want to talk to you guys about a very controversial subject, and that is new rifle break-in procedures, specifically how it relates to the barrel. Now, the internet has a lot to say about this subject. I even did a video about it a couple years back, and it was an okay video, but I was not satisfied with the depth of research or information I was able to pull together so I wanted to go a lot deeper and a lot further and get you guys some concrete conclusive evidence on what you should do in order to break in a new rifle if you even should break in a new rifle. For those newer to this subject, breaking in a rifle has to do with a series of shooting and cleaning parameters that people recommend you go through in order to break the rifle in. So that usually involves something like this. You get the new rifle, you clean it. Then you take one shot and then you clean it. And then you take one shot and then you clean it. And then you take another shot and you clean it. And you do that three, five, ten times. And then you take two shots and you clean it. And then you take two more shots and you clean it. And you do that three, five times. Then you take three shots and you clean it. And you do that two, three, four, five times. Then you take five shots and you clean it. And you do that another several times. And then maybe you're done. Then maybe you take ten shots and then clean it. There's all sorts of different versions, but basically it's some combination of procedure like that. And then the cleaning can get very exact. Sometimes they just tell you clean it. Sometimes they give you specific protocol. Use a dry patch, then a wet patch with solvent, then use a brush, then use a wet patch, then use a dry patch, then use copper solvent, then use a dry patch, or some other combination thereof. And you can get to the point where you end up spending half a day and a hundred rounds of ammo, an entire bottle of solvent, and a bag of cleaning patches in order to break in a new rifle. Now, what is this supposed to do? What does rifle break-in really do? Well, there are several theories as to what rifle break-in is. All right, one theory is that you're taking these shots and you're essentially breaking off or wearing off little micro imperfections that are inside the barrel, little pieces of metal that are sort of sticking out and the bullets going through and knocking those off and then you're cleaning cleaning it and getting those little specks of metal out of the barrel and that's going to help you with your accuracy. Another theory is you're essentially going in and by taking these shots you are polishing the inside of the barrel. Maybe you're building up a, a micro layer of copper fouling that's gonna make it shine and make it more accurate. Or maybe you're going through and you're seasoning the inside of the barrel through this process, which then somehow makes carbon fouling or powder fouling build up less in the future of that rifle. So basically you're, you're doing one of two things. You're either helping the rifle to become more accurate over the course of its life and or you're helping that rifle uh, accumulate less dirt and less fouling so that it needs clean less often over the course of its life. Now, I have been on both sides of this equation at different points in my shooting career. I've done both, right? I've been in both ditches as far as you could go. I've been on the side where I'm gonna spend an entire day in a bottle of solvent and $150 worth of ammo to break in a new rifle. And then if I hear about somebody who bought a rifle and then just started using it without break-in, caused me physical pain and cognitive dissonance in my body and in my mind just knowing that somebody would do such a terrible thing. And then I've been on the exact opposite side of the spectrum where ignorance is bliss and I never even heard of such a thing as a rifle break-in procedure. And so I know what it's like to be on both sides. I have tasted both and that's why I reached the point where I want to know what is the truth. What is the real answer to this question? So I started doing research 
research, a ridiculous amount of research. Online, everywhere I could find, just combing through everything that's been written about this subject. And there are a ton of magazine articles, and there are a hundred tons of blog posts, and there are a thousand tons of things posted on forums and Facebook and everywhere else. And essentially, what I found is this, there is no consensus, all right? There is just no consensus to be found in this approach. I can say that the, the best thing that I could find for the majority of this information dates back to a magazine article published in a rifle magazine in either the late 70s or early 80s, which essentially first introduced this break-in concept to the shooting world in a broad sense. Now, I was not able to locate that actual article, at least not what I thought was really the one. I've had some people produce reproductions, although I've seen those reproductions in different hunting magazines, so it didn't quite line up that whether or not that was the real source material or not, but I was not able to find anything that I was confident was the original article. Well, you might say, George, why don't you go and ask some gunsmiths? Well, I've gone out and reached out and looked at what some gunsmiths have to say about the subject and their opinions don't even fully agree and align. So I came to the conclusion where the only way that I could produce a satisfactory answer to this question on one, do you need to break in a rifle? And two, if so, what do you do? Was to ask the people that actually made the rifles. So I reached out to 21 different rifle companies, people that actually make the guns themselves, all right? And I figure if anybody should know what you need to do to break in their particular guns, it is going to be those people. So I reached out to all of them and I asked every single one the same question. I said, what is your company's recommended break-in procedure for your rifles that you make in order to get the most accuracy and the best outcomes from that rifle over the course of its service life? So I reached out to people online. I filled out forms on websites. I reached out to people via email directly. I submitted forms and chat requests. I called companies. And some companies, they responded immediately. I mean, within 24 hours. Others, they responded within a couple days. About half of them responded within a week. And the other half, I had to follow up with again and again. And some of them three, four, five times to finally reach a human being that could give me an answer. All right, but I did get through to every single one of these companies. Now, before I show you the list and what they said, I need to let you know that when I was talking to these people, sometimes the person answering the phone or responding to the email had a different opinion than the actual company had. All right, so that person had their own personal break-in process, and I'd say, okay, great, so this is the official process for your company, and they would say, oh, well, no. They'd again give me a different answer with a different process. So I thought that was interesting. So I didn't just stop with what the text said. I pushed a little deeper because I wanted the official position of each company. So here's the list of companies that I talked to. All right, I reached out to Armalite. Barrett, Benelli, Browning, Colt, CZ, FN, Franke, HK, Henry, Caltech, Kimber, Mossberg, Remington, Ruger, Savage, Sig Sauer, Smith & Wesson, Springfield, Weatherby, and Winchester. Now, why this particular list? Well, I was trying to get the majority of all rifles that are made in the United States, or not in the US, but for the US hunting market. All right, so these companies, I think, account for about 95% of the hunting rifles that are made in this marketplace. Now, you might say, well, George, there's a few that are on, not on this list that I'm aware of or that I like. Yes. Yes, there are, but almost all of them are owned by one of these companies. Some of them are sub companies, some are just brands. They're not even a separate company anymore. They were bought out years ago, and now they're just a name that these companies own. So they're not independent companies anymore, they're owned. In fact, some of the people on this list, I found out while doing the research, are actually owned by other people on this list. So now you wanna know what they had to say, didn't you? Well, I'm gonna tell you, but first, you need to hit the thumbs up button to help this video reach more people.
No, really, you need to hit it. I'm just gonna wait here until you hit the thumbs up button. I mean, why would you not hit the like button to somebody that contacted 21 different companies over an entire month to get this information to you? Wouldn't make any sense. Hit the like button. If you like videos like this, research, field tests, experiments, and reviews, why don't you also go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well. All right, let's jump into this list here. Number one, Armalite. Do they have a recommended break-in procedure? They says that it's optional and the quality assurance manager for the company does not do one. I thought that was kind of funny. They do not have a recommended break-in procedure for their company and the person in charge of QA doesn't do one. Number two, Barrett. Do they have a recommended break-in procedure? No. They said, we quote, have no recommended break-in. Benelli, do they? No. No official break-in for any of the guns they produce. You might say, George, I didn't know Benelli made rifles. They absolutely do, and they make nice rifles at that. Next one, Browning. Do they have a recommended break-in procedure? Well, yes and no. They said if they're more expensive models, they do not. Those rifles and barrels come, there's nothing you can add to them by any break-in procedure. But the cheaper ones that they have, those ones do require a break-in procedure. To the point where if you don't do a break-in procedure, they say that it can actually hurt the barrel and the future of the gun. Colt, no, no break-in procedure, although they say a few hundred rounds is good to break in the action for their semi-automatic rifles. CZ, no, no break-in procedure. They don't have a break-in process for any of their rifles. FN, they were very specific and direct. I talked to them on the phone. They said no break-in, period. The rifles are ready to go right out of the box. Franke, no. No break-in required, although it could be good and helpful to sight in a new gun if you include a break-in procedure with it. H and K, no, just clean the gun and use quality ammo. Henry, no, just clean before firing. They already test fire the guns before they leave the factory. Keltec, no, nothing for the barrel. If it's a semi-automatic, they recommend a few hundred rounds for the action. Kimber, no, no break-in needed. Mossberg, no, follow the manual for cleaning, but there is no break-in process. Remington, no, nothing other than normal cleaning. Ruger, no break-in process for any of their rifles, nothing other than normal cleaning. Savage, no, no break-in process. The firearms are good to go right out of the box. Sig Sauer, no, this is not needed, but it wouldn't do any harm if you did it. Smith & Wesson, no, no recommended break-in. Springfield Armory, no, it could help with some guns, but isn't needed. Weatherby, now Weatherby said yes. In fact, they doubled down on the break-in thing. They have a 20-shot break-in procedure. They even sent me a link to a video that some of the people who worked to the company put out that's like 40 minutes long talking about all the specifics and details of rifle break-in. And they had a, a very specific process, clean between groups of three. But if you don't do a break-in process, it cannot hurt. Winchester, yes and no. Cheaper models do need a break-in. Skipping it could hurt those cheaper models. The more expensive models need no break-in process. All right, so now what are we supposed to do with this information? How is it that some companies say they do have a recommended or even a needed break-in process while others completely and totally dismiss it? So it could be that maybe some barrels are more raw or machined differently than others. Always follow the specifications from the manufacturer. If it says in your manual to follow some specific break-in process, absolutely, definitely do that. However, we can see from this list across Across the board, the vast majority of manufacturers say there is no break-in process. Now, let me address some of the bigger question here and go a little deeper into this. Because some people really do claim that they get better accuracy after they take a few shots with that rifle. And there are numerous theories to help explain that. In fact, a lot of these companies quoted theories to me. And when I asked them, so you don't really know for sure, they all admitted, no, it's just a theory. That's what some people say happens. 
All right, so nobody really knows for sure. Nobody has taken 100 barrels off the same production run, the same factory, same material, take half of them, broken them in, take the other half and not, shoot a 1,000 rounds through each one of them, measure the accuracy, and determine if there is any difference between them. Nobody has done anything like that. Pretty much everything we have on this subject is theory. So what I would recommend you do is simply this. When you get a new rifle, clean it, right? Get all the packing grease and anything from the factory off of that rifle, go to the range, and then sight that rifle in, all right? Get it on paper at whatever range you plan to shoot, whether that's a scope or peep sight or some other kind of optic, get that thing sighted in, shoot it at a couple different ranges to see how it's doing for elevation at those ranges, shoot it from a couple different positions, right? Really get to know this rifle. Shoot it from a rest, shoot it standing, maybe shoot it kneeling or prone or from an improvised rest get to know your rifle then get a couple boxes of ammunition and see what kind of groups that that rifle can produce all right get several different kinds of ammo because every different ammo may pattern differently find the ammo that your rifle likes most and see what kind of groups that it can get all right, a lot of people do it in reverse and they try to pattern the gun first. They see, you know, how tight of a group can we possibly get with this rifle? And then they do all the other testing and get to know the rifle. Just do it in reverse. Because if there's anything to breaking in the rifle, you will have done it while just getting to know your rifle. And then when you go to shoot your groups, if there was any breaking in to be done, it will have been done. So what about breaking in a shotgun? Is that the same or is that different? Well, it is different. You should probably check out this video right here that I did on that very subject. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Till next time, God bless you guys and go get them in the woods.